The best of things come in threes, like my date with those Swedish bikini models. But I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I review three games for your Atari Jaguar. Second Opinion Games. Okay, so these are the games I'm going to review today. Ultimate Brain Games, an unfinished Atari Jaguar cartridge game, and it has chess and checkers, and someone actually made a really cool box for it, even if it is just a clamshell. And also then, Painter, a completely new game made by a very small development team for the Atari Jaguar CD. And I don't think it actually came with an instruction manual, but who knows? This is a legitimate copy, though, so take that for what it is. And Soul Star, a great game for the Sega CD, but for the Jaguar CD, it has to be better, right? And this one is a reproduction because the game was never released. So those are the games I'm going to take a look at, and I'll see you later. Bye. So let's start things up with Ultimate Brain Games, or I like to call it Ultimate Nothing. Now you will notice some really cool screens at the very beginning, and also take notice that there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. Now there are three games here at the main menu, Chess, Checkers, and Backgammon. When you try to do Backgammon, absolutely nothing happens. So might as well press the B button for Checkers. After we hit that, we can see a screen that doesn't really tell us much of anything. So I figure we might as well hit A here and start playing the game. Then it says Person versus versus computer, computer versus computer, or person versus person. Here, it doesn't matter. If you pick person versus person, nothing will happen. You cannot move at all. If you put human versus computer, well, then it's just computer versus computer. And the same thing, again, if you hit computer versus computer. So you could watch a game of checkers play out with no sound, and it's really boring. However, you can actually pick uh, what the level difficulty is and you could also pick uh, what the characters look like these weird lizard frog things or regular old checker pieces well at least it gives you some options huh so maybe chess will at least be playable press a go into the chess game where it gives you those three random things again might as well press a again and this time you actually can play against the computer now you could pick to go first or second or even the level of difficulty but i haven't ever been managed to make it through a whole game due to the fact that it plays super stiff and i mean unbelievably stiff you have to hold the d-pad for like two seconds before it scrolls to the next item and and it is just insane. Then you have to hold the A button to select it. It will blink slightly faster. And then you move it to where you need to move it. And then press the C button and hold it down for at least a second or two for it to stay on the table. And then the computer takes its time, much, much time, to finally move. I actually thought the game locked up. But no, it was just thinking about it really hard. And it was the first move of the freaking game. This chess is unplayable because the characters, you can't actually figure them out immediately what they are. The weird perspective of the board, even if it does look somewhat mildly good, it just makes it completely unplayable. So basically, stay away from Ultimate Brain Games, a.k.a. Ultimate Nothing. So then we have for our Jaguar CD, Painter, which is brought to us by the legendary reboot team, or Sinister Developments, as it says at the bottom of my main screen. And you could either press the B button to play Painter, press A for a password, which is ridiculous to try to enter a password in this freaking screen. I absolutely hate it and am just really frustrated by it. C, though, so we know who gets the credits for this game, and we can send them our fan mail. Or number five, to return to Slam Racer, which sounds like a really fun game. So we should hit that button, and the whole system will crash, causing us to reboot the Jaguar. Great. Okay, so let's just start the game, Painter, and you play as a mouse running around tracing etch-a-sketch lines with absolutely no sound going on. Now, I hear there are versions of this game that actually have sound. I really wish I had those because it might make it a bit more enjoyable. Now, you can press a button to take off a piece of track, 
so the cat or ghost thing can't chase you around. Eventually, that will fill back in. Luckily, because sometimes you have to backtrack yourself. This will give you a little bit more room and will let you finish the level. Now, if you manage to beat that one, then you have to spell the word rat. Still, there is only one cat slash ghost chasing you around, and it seems easy enough if it wasn't for that pesky time limit. I mean, seriously, some of these times are really, really tight. And if you don't plan your movements way in advance, then you're just going to fail. And that's where the game just falls apart for me. I can't think on my feet fast enough to make it through these levels. If we manage to beat that, then we could see how truly creative painter designers were by showing, uh, what, Nine Inch Nails? What's next? An ACDC level? And it just goes on and on from there. The game is like 50 or 100 levels. I don't even know because you're never going to see them all. Sure, there's plenty of gameplay here, but it's just so ridiculously hard that you'll never end up making it more than five levels into the game. Oh, that's just frustrating. Then going into our last game here, Soul Star, where you have to battle for the soul of a star. How epic is that? And you'll notice right away that it is licensed by Atari. This game would have been huge had it actually have come out because the music in it is great. So I recommend going into the options and scrolling down through the sound test and listening to the great music. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about stealing some of this music for the next intro I decide to make. It's that good. The gameplay starts off with CG gold. I'm telling you, this is movie quality at the time, that is. Now, I mean, it's just corny and cheesy and is perfect for the Atari Jaguar. It's what I love to see. We start off with a nice intro telling you how the mission's gonna go. And then we enter a Star Fox style level with lots of enemy scrolling ships and you're just shooting them down left and right. Without all the crazy polygonal effects, you're just seeing actual sprite scaling here which is just beautiful. Also pay notice to that giant Death Star in the background as that slowly gets bigger as you fly towards it. Then you're on the surface of it, shooting down more things and destroying some mechs on this planet as well. And then we start the next section of the mission where you have to fly into this giant Death Star and the sprite scaling here is pretty impressive as well. Make sure you collect lots of power-ups because when we start our next mission, you're going to need them to face off against the evil computer. Also, leading up to this, you'll notice some glitching effects. After all, the game was not even close to completed, but it still plays pretty good. For this first level when we start up the second level and go after that computer i did manage to complete the first portion of this destroying this supercomputer through a lot of trial and error you have to scroll up and down avoiding its spinny things and switch to your missiles and you should be able to take it out no problem and then some truly ominous music starts playing and i can't figure out how to open up the portal to jump to the next section if it's even coded that far it's just doesn't seem to work. Overall, Soul Star, the game plays really good, but you only have a level and a half to play around in, and that is really disappointing. I recommend just pick up the Sega CD version, but that costs a freaking fortune. So, there you go. This is three playable games? Well, Painter's playable, and Soul Star actually plays really good, but it's over far too soon, and Brain Games is a complete waste of your time and money. So, today, it's a bit of a wash. What do you expect for games that weren't really completed? And that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching.
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of my odds and ends and what I had left over for the Atari Jaguar. Up next month, I am going to release my big one, my official top 10. And as the guy that's reviewed more Jaguar games than any other guy on YouTube, you could better believe it's going to be truly epic. So please leave a comment down below of all the crazy stuff you want me to cover in the future because I am always wide open to hearing from the fans. And until later, I'll see you again, guys.